Hello everyone. I just wanted to make a quick video to illustrate how we use 3M in class for our coding assignments to find the MSDRG or to compute the MSDRG. So when you first log into 3M, you get the patient information screen. What you want to do is make sure you have the gender of the patient, right? Either male or female. If you don't know your case scenario didn't give you the gender of the patient, unless you're coding something gender specific like breast cancer or endometriosis, prostate cancer, the gender is something that you could pick male or female. Same with the age. You could put 30, 40, 50, unless your chart that you're coding is something age specific like a newborn or a pediatric or you know, a elderly patient with Alzheimer's, something that's age specific, you can just put a general age. What's important is on the right hand side under this product that you keep it at the DRG finder, okay? Leave the date um, as it comes up because you want to make sure that you're, you're using current code sets and current MSDRGs, which are based on the dates over here. So I would recommend you leave the dates as they sit and then make sure you enter your gender, age, and product finder as the DRG. Then you can hit continue. Now the patient disposition, this is where the patient goes when they leave our facility. So our patient, let's just say, went home. So always pick one for home. And now it's asking us for the admit diagnosis, okay? The admit diagnosis is what the patient comes in with. That's not the same as the principal diagnosis. Remember, in inpatient coding, we follow the UHDDS for our definitions. And the UHDDS defines a principal diagnosis as what brought the patient to us after study, okay? Admit diagnosis might be, in the patient's words, what he or she is experiencing. Shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, you know, chest pain, abdominal pain, whatever it might be. Um, sometimes it might be the same as the principal diagnosis. So let's just put um, here, you can either enter the code if you know what the code is, or you can look it up. So let's say our patient has pneumonia and they're coming in with a fever. So I'm gonna hit fever, and I'm gonna hit one here, and we're gonna hit A. Okay, so there's a sign or symptom code for our fever. Now, after study, the documentation tells us that our fever was actually pneumonia. So we're gonna hit diagnosis, and this now, our screen says ICD-10 principal diagnosis. So here, you're gonna type your principal diagnosis. So we're gonna type pneumonia. So I'm gonna select one. And then we don't know what kind of pneumonia, so I'm gonna hit D. We didn't have influenza, so I'm gonna hit two. And we didn't have any complications, I'm gonna hit no. We didn't have any other respiratory conditions, so I'm gonna hit no. We didn't have any procedures, so I'm gonna hit no. Okay, so now you'll see that I have my principal diagnosis that came up, but I also had the DRG come up. So if you have a secondary diagnosis, let's say our patient also had hypertension. So I'm gonna add a diagnosis. Again, if you know the code, like I-10 hypertension, say you looked your codes up in your CM code book first, you can just enter the code right here and hit okay, or you could go through and look at the code inside 3M, find it that way. So one thing I wanna show you are these edits. So these uh, 3M nosology, are the nosology are the, the expert coders that work for 3M. And these are just their edits or kind of their things for the coder to stop and think about. So it's asking us if our patient had any one of these things because that can occur with our code of pneumonia, J18.9. So you would just wanna think back through the documentation. If you saw any of those documented, you could also code one of those. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down. There's our codes. The R50.9 was our admitting. And then we had our principal diagnosis of pneumonia, secondary diagnosis of the hypertension. And then our DRG is the 195. So if you wanna take a print screen of this to share, you hit the function on your keyboard and the print screen button. And then you can open up a new document, like a Word doc, and hit your paste button and paste your print screen in there. 
So that's how you use 3M to calculate the MSDRG. If you want to add a procedure, if your patient had a procedure, you can just hit this add procedure button right here. It'll bring up a procedure. Um, if you want to back up, then you hit back. If you want to add a diagnosis, again, you can add one right there. We're going to give a patient another diagnosis. And now that's listed there as well. And you'll notice that diagnosis I put in changed our DRG. It came up as, remember, a CC is a complication or comorbidity. So that changed my DRG. It was 195 a minute ago. Um, so if I go and I'm going to delete this code I just entered by right-clicking on my mouse, hitting delete code, now my DRG went back to 195. So that's a perfect example of why making sure you capture those comorbidities and complications or CCs is important because a DRG of 195, the Medicare reimbursement should be $2,863.67. If I add that diagnosis back in, it changed my DRG as well as my reimbursement, right? For the, for the same patient, I gained almost $1,000 going from DRG 195 to 194, and now my reimbursement's $3,741.08. So again, as a coder, it's important to capture what the documentation tells you, right? We just don't make up codes and add them in to increase the revenue and the reimbursement, but we do skim through the documentation and make sure to pick up everything that's listed as something that coexisted, required treatment, or might have impacted the patient's stay or services or outcomes, right? Okay, I hope this video was helpful.